so I will tell some background about the format uh, that we use to, uh, to encode our corpora. Uh, first of all, some background. So Clarin has quite a long history in parliamentary corpora. Uh, it started with uh, a, a dedicated workshop at ELREC uh, 2018. Uh, Clarin also made parliamentary corpora as one of its key resource families. Uh, so at, at the workshop and then especially in the resource uh, families, it turned out there's quite a few corpora already out there, which is in a way not to wonder at because they're easily accessible. You don't have any copyright problems, uh, no GDPR problems. So uh, a brilliant uh, resource for computational linguists or for corpus linguists. But it also turned out that unsurprisingly, they're encoded in many different ways. Uh, which means that it's uh, more difficult to, to interchange them or to use any standard tools or them or anything else, uh, as a matter of fact. So uh, this was kind of the basis where we came up with this idea of a Clarin type B workshop, which means that, first of all, you have a workshop uh, and then there's also some work to be done. Uh, and this was parallel format. Uh, it was organized by, by Jan Odijk um, in the Netherlands in 2019. And me and Andrei Panchur, because we already had uh, our uh, Slovenian parliamentary corpus encoded in TEI, uh, Jan was kind of uh, in favor of that approach. Uh, well, so we developed that a bit and we presented uh, an initial draft of this, uh, what was then called uh, Parla Format, what is now called um, Parla Clarin. Um, we presented it and there was quite a lot of participants, about 20, I think, from, uh, from a lot of different countries. And they had very good ideas how to improve it, what the problems could be, what else they wanted. Uh, we took that into account and, uh, well, we made what is currently um, the Parla Clarin format. Uh, when I say currently, I mean it's by no means finished. Uh, a lot of things can be better and hopefully they will be. But anyway, uh, what it is right now is a TI based encoding for parliamentary corpora. And I already heard the criticism then, well, it's just TI, so what's the big fuss about it? Uh, but the idea was, in fact, to leave it uh, for the moment pretty uh, unconstrained because it's still in this development phase. So we thought it's better not to, you know, completely make the schema very, very prescriptive because we actually didn't know what kind of data people have in their parliaments and what they want to encode. So uh, on purpose, we left it uh, quite unconstrained, but we did put quite some effort into the documentation. And both of these things you can find on GitHub. So uh, you have the addresses here. Um, the, the GitHub one, you can of course clone to your own computer and do whatever you want to do with it. And there's also this option that GitHub offers is that you uh, put on a special page, github.io, uh, the documentation, the HTML documentation. Now, the nice thing about TI is that uh, they have this concept of odd, so one document does it all. So you have one TI document in which you put the formal specifications of the schema plus the documentation, and then you have standard style sheets, which enable you to uh, derive the HTML encoding of the documentation, so you get to read it uh, as well. And this is on this github.io address. Uh, and uh, the schema itself, as I say, is pretty much unconstrained. So even if it validates uh, a certain corpus, it doesn't actually mean it's encoded the way we would want it to be encoded. The documentation is currently the main thing. Um, so, uh, we went to uh, quite a bit of uh, bother actually to take into account all the aspects of parliamentary corpora that we found that people want to encode. So on the one hand, this is structure into legislative periods, session topics, speeches. Uh, you can also have transcription variants. Um, so you have one, the, the original, the unredacted transcription and then the one that's usually put out there on the web, which is the redacted one. Um, quite a bit of metadata can be uh, encoded about mandates, uh, parliamentary bodies, uh, where uh, the sitting take place, but especially uh, dates and times. So we went to, uh, well, quite a bit of uh, 
trouble to explain this, uh, but TI already has nice attributes about, uh, so uh, chronological attributes. So you can, you can stamp quite a bit of uh, the data there as to from when to when, for instance, a certain person is a member of a certain party or from when to when a certain party existed uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, then we also have uh, lots of metadata about speakers which we in fact use in the uh, parliament corpus. So when they were born, uh, their sex education, party membership, which is quite important. Yeah, if you want to, I don't know, split uh, speakers into say more left or more right. Uh, links to external resources, for instance, to Wikipedia and so on. Uh, and the same then goes to parties. Yeah, so we have a special uh, list of parties uh, and the speakers then just uh, in a way point into the definition of the political parties. Uh, as I said, uh, it is by no means finished and I, I hope we will do some more work now in the second stage of the project. Uh, the schema now when we have some idea what is in parliamentary corpora will be made more strict. We'll give better examples probably taken from the parliament corpora. Uh, add scripts for down conversion into various formats, which to an extent we already developed in Parliament, and hopefully some community development will also take place because right now it's just me, me and Andre that have been developing it, but of course GitHub enables well uh, posting of issues, pull requests and so on. So uh, we quite soon found out that the schema, uh, the, the official, if that's the word to use, uh, Parla Clarin schema is not quite strict enough for what we had in mind. So when we started developing these four corpora, which are now at version one, uh, it, it was kind of bottom up process that first of all, people uh, encoded what they had according to Parla Clarin. And then we had a look and said, okay, well, this could be more unified than it is. Uh, so in this process, we unified the four corpora to, I would say quite a nice extent. Uh, and somewhere towards the end for the kind of fine polishing, uh, uh, we also made this uh, Parla Mint uh, schema. And this is this, in a way, it's, uh, it has something to do with TI. Of course it does because it's a subset. Uh, the Parla Mint schema will accept a subset of the document, of the documents that the Parla Clarin schema does. On the other hand, it has nothing to do with the TI because it's not done in the way that TI schemas are done, but it's just made completely from scratch. Yeah, so you have um, a relax NG schema plus uh, in some other flavors as well. So W3C schema to validate the Parliament Corpora. So this is actually the one to use in the development of uh, those that will want to um, go into this phase two of the project. And it is also available together with the corpora on the handle that uh, that you see here and Maciej gave, gave uh, before. <coughs> um, I would also say that as, because now we do have these four corpora, probably at least to me, it's the easiest to look at an example and then just do whatever they did in this example. And now we have four examples. Uh, so it's probably the easiest way to encode your corpora to just have a look at one of the example corpora and more or less copy what is there except for the actual content. And then yeah, validate with the parliament schema if everything is okay. Uh, now, if there's anything that is unclear for those that you, um, uh, that will participate, uh, please do get in touch with me. Uh, once we have the people that are actually in the uh, second stage, I think we will set up something smarter than emails, uh, probably Git issues, I would imagine, uh, for the actual communications, uh, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, so uh, further work about the schema, as I already said, um, no, I didn't actually say that, sorry. This is about the parliament encoding. Uh, this is just some, I would say self-criticism we haven't actually managed to unify everything uh, the way that it could be, if not should. Uh, so the transcriber comments, which appear quite often, uh, they could have a nicer taxonomy than they do right now. Um, some other taxonomies, because we do use taxonomies quite heavily in the corpora, uh, they could be uh, even further harmonized. 
and uh, the parliament uh, should be integrated with Parlax Larin. As I said, that is something that's waiting for me in, in uh, the stage two of this project. Uh, and with this, I will uh, stop.